Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today I'd like to introduce you to a collectible doll. Well, the new one is not collectible, but the old dolls are very collectible. And this new one is a lot of fun to work with. Children can play with it. You can collect it. And it also comes with a fabric panel so we can make a quilt and clothing. All for this one little doll. The doll is called a Cupid doll. The original Cupid doll was manufactured in 1912 and they were made out of abyss. They were made different sizes and over time the materials did change. The Cupid doll all came into existence from a woman called Rose O'Neill. She created these cute little Cupid dolls. They were designed after Cupids, so she named them Cupies. The dolls were not boys or girls. They were just little cherubs. And the original ones did have little wings on them. In 1909, she created her first comic strip in the Ladies Home Journal. And that little cartoon character, the Cupid doll, took off. They were on advertisements, cartoons, they were all over. And that's why in 1912, she did create the dolls. These dolls are still collected right up to today. In 1944, Rose passed away in Branson, Missouri. And to this day, they still hold an annual Cupid doll convention. And in the year 2021, it will be in April 21st to 25th. And that convention is all about these Cupid dolls. These dolls were so popular that even Perry Como in 1958 came out with a song called Cupid Doll. Riley Blake with the Cupid Corporation has come out with their version of the Cupid Doll. Not only do they have the doll, but the doll comes with its own panel. This panel has a pre-printed quilt front and back, coveralls with the lining, a little bunting bag, diapers, bibs, and a little softy. So today, let's turn this panel into the accessories for Cupid Doll. And I'm going to show you a way to take these clothing pieces and use them to design your own clothing. The little Cupid Doll is eight inches tall. The arms and legs and the head move. It does have the little heart trademark and it has the trademark in the back. We just do not have the little wings. So the first thing we need to do is take this panel and make the Cupid doll a quilt. So we have these two big pieces and we can cut them out on the black dotted lines. Of course, we can turn this into a regular quilt by laying the background fabric on, putting our quilt batting down, putting the quilt down, quilt it and bind it. But we can also make this is what I would call a pillowcase turn. Start with your fabric pressed and have the background fabric facing up, the front piece facing down. And that background fabric is a little bit bigger for us to work with. The fabric is directional, so we wanna make sure that we have the directions correct. A pillowcase turn is where we're going to stitch around all four sides, leaving an opening, and then we're gonna turn this whole thing right side out. Now we can do this without quilt batting, but you can also do it with quilt batting. So we're gonna take some quilt batting and lay it right on the bottom and make sure that they're well pressed. Start at the bottom, back stitch, and we're going to follow the edge of that top because it is a little smaller and stitch all the way around, coming back to the bottom and back stitch. So we're gonna leave about a four inch opening at the bottom. Before we turn this right side out, we're going to trim down this quilt batting. Move your seam allowance out of the way and trim that batting as close as you can to that stitching line. So we have the seam and all of that batting trimmed off, but the fabric is still on. We're going to turn this right side out, but before we do, let's fold back this little opening. Go to the iron and press that seam allowance down. Press it on the one side and press it on the other. We do not need to trim that extra background fabric off, but we do need to trim off that point. Cut that point off so we're going right into that corner stitch. Be careful not to cut the stitch, just that corner comes off. 
and do that to all four corners. With that corner cut off, it's going to be softer in this corner. And by having two different seam allowances on the quilt, it's a graded seam. So inside, it's going to be a lot smoother. Go through the two layers of fabric and pull it right side out. Use a little point turner and go in and just poke out those little corners. That seam that we pressed open will now match up and we can press this entire quilt flat. I would highly recommend pressing, which means we're putting the iron up and down. If we push the iron, we can move this fabric and stretch it. We have both sides perfectly matched, so by pressing up and down, it's going to keep them that way. Once this is pressed, we can quilt it and close up this edge. The little doll quilt will now be done. The panel has a few more things. We need to cut this out on the lines and match up those sides. Place the fabric right sides together and stitch all the way around, leaving an opening so that we can turn this right side out. When it's stitched, we're going to have to do some notching and some trimming. In each of these little areas, we need to notch and that notch will help it have a nice smooth seam. A notch is taking your pair of scissors and snipping right to the threads. And that little notching is really going to make a big difference on how it smooths out. We can also notch some edges to make all of these edges nice and smooth because we're gonna stuff this like a stuffed animal. We can take a pair of scissors and snip right to that stitching line all the way around, or we can use a pair of pinking shears. Just trim off the extra Having those little pinking shears go close to that stitching line. So those pinking shears are notching for us. Before we turn this right side out, press that little opening so the seam allowances are going in. It's just going to make it easier to match up. Now we can turn this right side out. When it's all stuffed, we now have the angel wings for our little Cupid doll. The next few things on the panel are clothing. We have a pair of overalls in the overall lining. We have this little sleep sack with the lining, a bib and a diaper. But before we do this, I'm going to copy these patterns on paper. Just by placing a piece of paper over top, you might need a light box or just hold it up to a window and cut out the shapes. I have the bib, the diaper, the coveralls, and that little sleep sack. This is going to give me patterns to make additional clothing. But let's start with the original clothing. That little sleep sack and the jumpers made very similar. So let's cut out all of the pieces and we do need to cut them out on that black dotted line. All of the pieces are going to be done the same way. We have a lining and the front or a back. I did cut the bottom piece with my pinking shears just so I do not need to hem that lining. We need to put right sides together and stitch right along the edge where the lining is. Once that little lining piece has been stitched on, we do need to notch these edges. And to save time, I did use the pinking shears, getting nice and close to that stitching line. When I did stitch these together, I used a very small stitch. It's going to make the seam stronger and it's easier to turn these little corners. Now I can turn these right side out. Use a turning tool and poke out those shoulders. And this is definitely a good time to give it a bit of a press. Do that to all of the pieces. That top edge is now done. Place right sides together. We can now stitch from under the arm all the way around and back to under the arm. Be sure to do a little back stitch on both of those areas. So we have that little stitching up here and then it's continued to go down all the way around. You can leave the seams the way they are, but if you have pinking shears, it's always nice to clean off those edges. The pinking shears just makes it look nice. Now we can turn this right side out. We now have that little sleep sock. So Cupid fits right in and we will need to put some little snaps up on the shoulders. For the coveralls, the difference is we need to put a hem on the bottom of those pants. While it's still flat, press that seam up. We can stitch this down now, 
or sew it all together and stitch it after. Place right sides together, very similar to this sleep sack. We're going to start up at that armpit and go right down to the bottom and back stitch. Do that to both sides. To separate the pants, we need to stitch a little U. We're going to start at the bottom and stitch all the way up. Again, be sure to use very small stitches. Once these edges have been stitched and this U have been stitched, we can cut this apart and do the pinking shears along the side if you have them. Now we have those legs free. If you sewed that hem first, this would already be done. But if you like the look of a finished hem, you can do a little row of hand stitching just to stitch this down or use a little bit of fabric glue. With that little hem done, the little coveralls are also done. The bib and the diaper will work the same way, but I want to make two of them. So I'm going to get an extra piece of fabric. Before I cut out this fabric, I'm just going to put it right sides together on another piece of fabric. Before I cut these apart, I'm going to sew them. But I'll draw the lines just to give myself some guidance. I traced out where those black cutting lines are and I will be sewing in an eighth of an inch. For the bib, we do need to leave an opening in the bottom. So we're going to stitch all the way around and back stitch right here. So we're going to need a tiny little opening. We will also need an opening for the diaper. So leave a little spot and stitch all the way around. I'm going to stitch my fabric together flat like this. It's a lot easier to maneuver this under the sewing machine than these tiny little pieces. Now that my pieces are sewn together, I can trim apart on that black dotted line. We do need to snip those curves or cut them with the pinking shears. I can now turn the diapers and the bibs right side out. As you're turning these right side out, be sure to poke out those little corners. And by notching those seams and pushing out those corners, we have those nice round edges. We can sew that closed or we can use a fabric glue. So I'm going to press them flat first and then put a little bead of fabric glue there. I now have two diapers and two bibs. Now all of the pieces from that panel have been used, but because I did take some copies, I'm going to be able to make additional clothing. We can do the bibs and the diapers from the coveralls. I just cut them apart, put in a little elastic on the bottom, did the pinking shears and that lining pattern became a little top. I took that same lining and added a little ruffle on at the bottom. So now I have a little dress. Two snaps at the shoulder for the dress. This little reversible top. We'll just need two snaps on the shoulders. We have those cute coveralls, which will need those two snaps up at the shoulders. The little diapers will need some snaps. And of course, those bibs will need some snaps. And we have that sleep sack and snaps at the shoulders. Now, if you don't want snaps, you can always use little pieces of Velcro. So from this one set, we got a quilt, a little cuddly toy, sleep sack, coveralls, bibs and diapers. And I did make some little extra outfits from those patterns. And our Cupid doll is now done. Now that Cupid's finished, I will need to make myself a larger quilt of her quilt. If you do have pinking shears, this is definitely a great time to use them. A little fabric glue also helps so we do not have to do as much little sewing. And I definitely would recommend a turning tool that has a nice little point to it. So we now have our little Cupid doll done. The panel came with a wardrobe, a little softy, and a really cute quilt to go with the Cupid doll. This is a fun project to make and the quilt is definitely a easy project for a beginner. What a fun way for two people to sit down and have some fun together. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.